I think uh, what we can see is that uh, these opportunities do give them uh, the ability to grow. And uh, we do see companies at very early stages uh, being valued at higher values that uh, we've seen before. If you're looking on the Israeli system, uh, we're a very small country. We see many investments done all the time, uh, new startups, uh, VCs, angels. This is flowing all around. You also have the Israeli uh, government assistance, either via what is called the chief scientist grants and other methodologies, which are also helpful. Uh, may cause uh, a little bit of hassle at the end, but... Uh, are they worth the more beginning. now on their books than they were three, five years ago? Depends on the company. Depends. So it's not a trend across... All right, Liz, are you seeing Yeah, anything? I mean, I would say, I think there's two points here. One is what Amit said before about 15 years ago, it took $100,000 to create a concept. Right? You didn't have customers, you didn't have data, you didn't have feedback from the market yet. Today, for $2,000, you can get to that phase, you know, less. You could, you could do it just with your phone, practically. So what we're seeing is not necessarily that the valuations are higher, but that the information that you're investing in is deeper. So if you do a crowdfunding campaign and get 1,500 customers who all tell you, I really like this at this price, give you feedback about, hey, you know, you should also do this type of a product. That investor has a lot more information about the potential success of the company. So it may not be that the company's worth more, but the conversation between the entrepreneur and the investor, the weight shifts a little bit. And maybe they say, yeah, you know, before we thought their demand was going to be X, but this has shown us that we think demand might be Y, they might decide it might be worth more or less, but I don't think just because more people have access to money, it makes the valuations higher, but I think it makes the information a lot better. Come to you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Amit, I wanted to ask you, if, if I'm a VC um, and uh, I'm looking to invest in a company that's already had an angel uh, funding round, um, and there's a lot more of these companies coming up now. Uh, there's a lot of buzz, there's a lot of spin. Am I investing into a more dangerous market now because there's a lot of money at the beginning, at the bottom? I don't think the word dangerous is correct. I think you are investing in a market that has more information, as Liz said. And in fact, you're able to make, definitely as a VC, supposedly if you're a good VC, if you're experienced, you're seasoned, you should be able to make better investment decisions now with, than you could five years ago or ten years ago with the vast data information. Uh, VCs, as a general, don't invest in risky things. They, they know when they come in, they pretty much know what they're doing. They, the, doesn't mean that they'll be successful. The statistics have not changed, by the way. The 90% the failure rate has not changed. There's just more participants here and a lot more money. But they are under pressure from the angels. Uh, Absolutely right? they're under the pressure, of course. Alex. Wanted, I'd like to add a couple of words. Uh, uh, my background, engineering background. I'd like you know to propose to split these two definitions. Angel investors are good for consumers' internet when they really understand the, the business or the idea of business and so on. Technology, if there is a core significant R&D inside, engineering inside. Uh, I don't see how angels, uh, outside of the specific profession of this specific technology core may be of any help. And after all, you will not fund next Cisco or Juniper or Audiovox or most of the Israeli most successful companies with $100,000. This is where professional investment funds are needed, definitely with, with vast and, and significant technological expertise. Right. Peter, is there, is there more friction now and battle between angel angel investor in, as in VCs and there was in the past? No, there's no battle and there's, uh, it, it's, it both are parts of the food chain which is uh, very difficult to understand for many people. The one doesn't exist with the other, they create the deal flow for the VCs and without the VCs there is no growth financing for the, from the point of the angel investors. So I wouldn't see that there is a, um, a fight, but of course VCs like seed funding 
um, as long as it invested by the angels. <laughs> so that, and then they're all in favor of seed funding. They don't do that. Um, and that is perfectly okay. The second thing is uh, you see a trend into groups of angels. Uh, I mean, I'm not talking business angel networks, but rather structured uh, angel groups of 10 people, 12 people, or whatever, who are very experienced, who come from different industries, who have a technology background. Who, and, and that is the, the huge advantage of having a group of five angels, for instance, being in a startup as the one we're negotiating here in Israel at the moment with the New York angels, and having people involved who are coming from the industry and being on the ground and have a close contact to the entrepreneur that allows long distance angel right. investing which traditionally has never been done. Okay. So it's a part of a sequence and is not a disc it is not a fight. But it certainly is true that um, there is an equity gap and why the VCs have grown so huge that uh, they won't look in below 10 million or what. So uh, there is a lot of room in between the hundred thousands and the ten millions. And here we see the trend for the structured angels, the super angels coming in. And I think this is a very good thing because that we need more assistance for the entrepreneur. I think it's not just about money. There are about 20, maybe 25 million companies started this year in the world. Uh, out of which probably uh, in the United States, uh, maybe 20% or, or whatever of, out of them. 100,000 have received funding in the US from angels, from 300,000 angels have invested in 100,000 companies. 5,000 is VC. So we, we have to get this in a perspective. All right. There are 20 million startups and 5,000 in the US, and that is 70% of all the VC Thanks. in the world. So if, if you do the math, you probably come up and say, in the world, there may be 7,000, 8,000 VC deals a year out of 20 million startups. Here. So, you know, a lot is the invisible, the informal part of the uh, capital market and is not being put down in the numbers Thank we are published. Thanks for that, Peter. Um, folks, we're, we're heading into uh, the last 15, 20 minutes. What I said at the beginning, and uh, I'll ask you if you're, if you're interested and keen, that we wanted to try and use uh, the opportunity that we have with our panelists now to try and answer some of your questions, uh, get you some investment advice, see what's, what's cooking. And one of the ideas was that we'd come up with a startup in this room right now. Um, you know, if there's anyone who has a uh, startup category, an app, an idea, a market, or a country, are people into that, or should we just carry on? With some, uh, with some audience questions. Should we carry on? No one has any, any startup ideas? So it's kind of um, not really well thought after, and obviously not something I'm going to do, but um, I thought it's a worthwhile idea. It's a bit morbid, but let's just go for it. If it's too strange, then we can drop it. So I was thinking about uh, people that pass away uh, and what goes on with their Facebook pages. Usually the families want to keep them and Facebook does not allow it sometimes. But obviously there's something going on there. <laughs> so I was thinking about the fact that uh, alongside with that, um, it's becoming very non-ecological to bury people and people want, want to get burned sometimes. I'm very sorry for this very, very heavy topic, but I just had this thought I was... Sorry, um, you're, you're, you're thinking of an afterlife company, a, a full... Like, like a, a virtual a full cemetery, for, yeah, yeah. For when you die, we take care of everything. We take care Something of your Facebook, we like can carry on tweeting with for Facebook. you. Facebook, you take everything right. from, you know, that person. Okay. <laughs> Is Let, that very sh weird? Sh should we call this the, the deadend.com? company. Oh, deadend.com dead sounds amazing. Or a new start. A new startup. Okay, a new start. Yes. A new start. That's a good name. So is this, is this something, Liz, Liz, is this something, is, is this something that, that would work on, on Indiegogo? <laughs> yeah, maybe Fun, funding for the dead it might be... Um... The afterlife, uh, your afterlife needs. Experience. You have to like sneeze. Um, yeah, I, do, I just I don't know how many people want to 
think about that right now, contributing to that, but I do think it could be interesting as a follow-on to the elder uh, business here. <laughs> but hold uh, on. What I would say, as with every good idea, I'm sorry to tell you, it's already been done. And if you go and Google Yossi Vardy ISP for the afterlife, you'll find a great presentation that Yossi did about an ISP for the dead. And it's, it's a great market, it's always growing, and there's great, no need for customer service. It's a wonderful <laughs> thing to do. So it, it exists. All right. So, you know, I think, I think what, what, what I'll do is we'll, thank you for that. We'll, um, we'll, we'll keep that in mind. But um, uh, I think it brings up a good question. If I have a startup idea, just an idea, I don't even have a product, right? Where do I go for funding straight away? Where, where, where should I go? Well, you shouldn't go anywhere. Well, from my perspective, I, I, I never, ever invest in ideas. The best ideas in the world. Uh, Edison said, you know, uh, uh, ideas without, oh, sorry, vision without execution is hallucination. So the fact that you have a great idea means nothing to me. I would never invest a dime. I would invest if I think that you are able, either you've proven that you're able to do things, that you're actually able to get something from idea to something, then you'll go, then I'll, then I'll invest in that. But uh, if you walk around here, there are a thousand people here with 2,000 ideas and they don't get funded, so. Right. I would uh, add to that. We don't have a lack of ideas in the world. We have a lack of ideas who perform and execute it and transfer it into a product or a service. And that is the second question. You would ask uh, an entrepreneur, what is the consumer advantage? And if there's no benefit for that, um, the greatest idea uh, will, not, uh, will not flourish. And therefore, um, I think it's not about the ideas, and, and uh, that's why we would say that someone come up and has a maybe not a super class idea of what we thought is one, but is a first class executioner, is a manager, an entrepreneur, you rather would go uh, for the better entrepreneur and the, the worse idea than the other way around. So this is the old debate between where are we betting on, the horse or the jockey? Right. It's Let's decided, we, we bet always on the jockey. Got it. Liz? So, I mean, I think it's interesting because on Indiegogo, people do put their ideas up, but there's usually a plan to say, okay, this is my idea and I need X dollars to do this, 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 and this. Will you believe in me for that? So the example I love to use is the Cat Cafe in London. This is an idea where you go to a place and there are cats roaming around and you sit on the floor and you play with these cats. I don't know how many investors would have like written a check for... 110,000 pounds for this because it sounds kind of kooky. But this woman went up on Indiegogo and said, I want to rent this space. This is the regulation. This is how I'm going to get around this space, etc." She raised 110,000 pounds. That's a lot of money. She opened this cat cafe. Now there's two in Toronto and one in Melbourne and all this. You know, maybe there'll be a chain of these someday and there'll be investors. But she had this crazy idea, but she also had if I get this money, I will do this. With the next tranche of money, I will do this. She had a real plan. A plan. And there are a lot of cat people out there who were very defer diffuse, and not all of them happened to live in London, but they were like, hey, I love cats, I want to see this made. Right. They bought their tea and crumpets in advance, contributing to this campaign, and it came forward. Not a lot of investors would have written that check the crowd was able to fund it, but she had a plan. It wasn't just an idea. Alex, I think you... Just to, to react, we don't yet know whether this is a good or not business. No. Right? The fact that she was able to raise the funds... She opened the business and it's running. So my point is she brought an idea forward and she executed on right. the idea. And if it failed, yeah. still... Alex. Yeah. I'll try to answer the, the, the original question, where to go. Because all the rest of us just said that there is nowhere to go. Um, uh, friends and family and fools, let's say, it was already mentioned, uh, uh, which means they won't analyze your uh, execution skills, they will analyze you and, and, and measure you as a person, as, as, as a relative and as a friend. Uh, second, there is a lot of programs, a bunch of programs of 
uh, various incubation, acceleration uh, institutions all around the world. They are mostly government supported or even, even private, but uh, those, those are the places I would suggest to go with the idea. If you want to verify your idea or to wrap it up, to, to, to pack it in something fundable, then go to one of these, say, source Very of uh, you, you free support. You picked up the microphone. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would add my uh, viewpoint on that. So, assuming it, that you have found uh, an investment, then the first thing to do is, uh, how are you going to do your business? Is it going to be an Israeli company? Is it going to be a U.S. company? You need to talk to your investors, see what their preference would be. Sometimes the preference is one, and uh, from a tax perspective, you have better solutions, so you can work with them to build a company which will bring more value in the future. So I assume that getting the investment is the more important thing, right. but after that, there are many issues to look into. Peter, before, before you start, folks, um, we're going we're gonna to wrap up now. Uh, if there's anyone with questions, uh, just, just kind of shout them out or, or raise your hand. I'll come to you uh, just as soon as Peter is finished. Um, I think um, uh, all these technical, uh, technicalities are very important, but much more important is the person, is the strengths, is the stanima, is the resilience of a person and how to work under pressure. Um, and therefore, uh, very often I think it may be better you, have a, you, you find out that there is a person, maybe not the brightest in the world, uh, but who's able to work 24-7 and to go through uh, and, and has the ability to accept failures and has to start again and to come up again and go down but never out. Right. And I think this is the most important thing. And if you have a chance to find a person like this, there may be a success. But with the vast majority fail, I think the most important thing in most countries, at least in Europe, we not only have to have a winner culture, we need a failure culture. We have to deal with failure as a normal part of entrepreneurial activities. And if we do not accept that, we will not have enough entrepreneurs. The word entrepreneur has almost not been touched today and this morning. Uh, the most important uh, resource we need for is the entrepreneur. We will have a lot of angels, we will have other people to fund. It's not a lack of capital. It's a lack of entrepreneurs and maybe smart capital. Thanks for that, Peter. Um, are there any questions for our panelists? Anyone have any... Uh burning questions. Okay, great. So I think uh, we'll wrap it up there. Let me just thank everyone. Peter Jungen, thank you very much uh, for your insights. Liz Wald from Indiegogo, um, Alexander Turcott, uh, Maxfield Capital, um, Amit Shafrir from uh, Safer Aging, and uh, Verit Kirschner, Pricewaterhouse. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>